What's up guys, it's Nick Bagelboy coming back at you today and it's going to be my first tutorial video. It's for all my punks out there, my DIYers, craft heads, and anyone else who likes to make some band stuff today. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make some band patches like this from any materials you can find around your home and stuff. Stick around after and I'll show you guys some of the projects that I've done, such as my coat, jeans, and a whole bunch of other different kinds. If you want to get some examples of all the stuff that you can do. And with that being said, let's get into part one of this video. Alright, just another thing I should point out, when you're watching this, you'll notice that I do a lot of rambling and act really nervous and stuff, it's my, it was my first, uh, it was my first tutorial, never done this before, I'm usually always nervous in front of cameras, because before I used to be in front of them when I was drunk, and I'd have no fear of anything, so now I have to do it all sober, and do my best, so sorry if it rambling and mix up my words and can't really explain what I'm trying to say half the time. Alrighty, so, here's part one, these are the things that you're going to need. First off, you're gonna need a good cutting board. Um, I have a couple of plaque pictures. One, this is Albert Einstein, rest in peace. Um, I use the back of the plaques, so that way it doesn't ruin the front and it doesn't ruin the tables. Uh, you're going to need a piece of hard paper, anything like cardstock, thin, thin cardboard. Um, I'm using Bristol board. It's very cheap and it's a lot of it. You're going to need your picture of your stencil which you want to make it to your patch. I just went on and grabbed this one quickly because it's simple and it's a good example to show you guys what's going on. You're going to need some tape and tape is to tape it obviously onto what you're cutting it onto. You're going to need an X-Acto knife. Uh, you can get these at Walmart, any craft star, store. Don't use the industrial ones that slide up. Those ones absolutely suck. Use a precision X-Acto knife. Um, you're going to want to get some extra blades too if you plan on doing more than one patch because they do go dull pretty quickly and they're about five dollars for I think, I don't know, six or eight blades. Um, they look like this. You're going to need um, obviously patch material. You can buy um, actual iron-on patches. They come like this. What I've used for most of my patches are just old fabrics from jeans, old jeans that I don't wear anymore and I just cut them up. Um, try and not, try and uh, Cut them along the seams where they get sewn on because it's really hard to do a good patch over that and then cut it out after. And uh, you're going to need like a styrofoam play or something for when you paint um, for the patches. A roller. Also, um, what I found works pretty good is uh, like a sponge brush. I don't really have any around me, but um, you use it and you dab it. I'll try and find one for after. Fabric paint. Um, any kind of paint works pretty good, even acrylic paint and stuff, just be careful it doesn't wash out after. You can use spray paint, but just be careful with the spray paint. Um, it doesn't go good on black fabric at all, even if you do multiple coats. So I usually use spray paint or fabric spray paint for, spray paint, sorry, for uh, white fabrics and any other light fabrics that I can go dark on. Like I said, white does not work good at all. And so yeah, that's pretty much about it. Alright, so this next part you're going to begin to cut out. Um, what I like to do is I like to tape the edges so that way it doesn't move. So I'll just do this really quickly just to show you guys. Sorry about the shakiness. Uh, it's not really on the most reliable surface. Alrighty guys, sorry about that. Just had to move to a more stable surface so the camera wouldn't keep shaking. But as you can see, I'm just taping the edges here. So, like I said, when you cut it, it doesn't move away from you. I usually tape the entire length of the picture, but that would take too long at the moment. Kind of go as fast as I can. So I don't bore you guys to death. So now, before before I cut, um, I usually like to find the smallest um, pieces to cut out. Oh, sorry. So now, what you're going to do if you haven't guessed already you cut the black part out I know it seems kind of obvious but some sometimes people mess that up and I know sometimes I've messed it up a few times and uh, if you're wondering where to get stencils just go on Google Images type in I don't know your ba favorite band or whatever picture you want and then type in stencil after and there should be tons of results that'll come up make sure you get like an actual stenciled image um and if it's a complete circle you're gonna have to cut, make it into like a semicircle. So um, kind of go on to like military uh, writing, like the stencil writing that they use, and look at their O's and anything that's a complete circle, and you have to cut through lines. Um, sorry, that didn't make any sense. For example, say uh, you want to cut out a smiley face. Well, if you just cut the entire smiley face out, it'll just fall out and be one perfect uh, circle that 
without the face. So what you're going to want to do is cut down like this and this, and then cut like this. So that way it still holds on. So you just kind of cut this part out and then do the same thing over here. And then cut that part out and leave the middle intact. I'm sure there are other uh, tutorials out there that help you understand that better. Yeah. So before I start cutting out, I don't like to cut the big parts out. Like I, I wouldn't cut the mohawk out first. I would cut the small things out like his ear, his pieces of the eyes and stuff like that. Because um, when you're holding it and you're cutting, when you cut the big things out first and then go for the small, there'll be a lot of flaps. And then sometimes you'll end up ripping the entire picture. But when you cut the small ones out first and then go for the big, it doesn't seem to do that. So that's just another little, little tip to help you guys out, if you guys get what I'm saying. Um, trial by error as well. Anyways, so let's get into it. Another thing I forgot to mention is when you're cutting small things out like this that have a lot of points, do it one line at a time. Don't just try and go like this and then curve and then come back. Just do one line like this. Line and then line. Also, be careful with your fingers, obviously. They cut really fucking easily. See so then line here and then go into it. Um, Because when they start going really jagged like this and a lot of points, it's easy to just rip it because the paper is really thin. So when you keep going like a curve, it'll rip. And then after you're done, just pull it out and toss it to the side. Try not to rip it. Um, even if it's if it's not coming out, try and go recut it again. Because if you rip it, it'll obviously rip the paper. And you don't want that because it'll fuck up your whole stencil. Another thing that I forgot to mention is when you're cutting things out and they have uh, really thin bridges going uh, across them, I usually like to cut about a little bit inside of the stencil. Because if I cut right perfectly along the edge, it'll create a very thin bridge, and then it makes the stencil easier to rip. Um, I know it doesn't really matter too much sometimes, but when I can, I try and avoid it. And then you just peel it off. See how there's a bit of more of a darker outline? It's just so I make sure to keep it a bit thicker, that way I'm more on the safe side. Also, another thing that I forgot to mention is it's good to have a lot of music going. Um, when you're cutting these because sometimes depending on what size the stencil and how intricate the design is it's going to take you a long time if you're like me um, and like to do it I guess pretty perfectly and make it look really nice. I've cut some stencils that I was making for t-shirts and one of them took me about an hour and a half to two hours just to fully cut the entire stencil. So it helps to have a lot of music and a lot of damn patience. But more importantly just enjoy it. It's supposed to be a really fun thing and you know, just take your time and just have fun with it. You know, it's a it's a fun experience. You know, make something from absolutely nothing and see all the patches in the stores that you could buy, and then you got one that you completely made yourself. And not many people can say that. So obviously, if you're in the punk scene, you can say it because most people make their own patch patches. But still, it's still fun to make them. I don't really like to just paint a band's name on a piece of fabric and then slap it on my jeans. I I'm more of a materialist when it comes to that sense. I like to get the actual logo and make it look professional, I don't want to, but whatever floats your boat, by all means, go for it, man. Alright, let's say, for example, you've finished cutting the first layer of the stencil. What I like to do is take a black marker and color in the stencil. So, color in all the places that I cut out. Like this. And I like to do that for the entire uh, stencil, all the, all the ones that I've cut out. Because after you take this uh, thin layer off, uh, you're gonna be cutting out the entire thing out. You don't have to cut it all out again. You can, you know, try and cut it all the way through, but that doesn't usually work for me. I find that uh, it becomes harder, especially to try and pull the pieces out of the thin paper. It just ruins your entire stencil sometimes. I like to color it in so that way when I take this thin layer off, I still have the entire picture of the stencil that I want to cut out. That way it's just easier to go along again and cut it because um, even though you've pretty much cut all the way through on the other side, it still becomes really hard to see exactly what you're cutting out, especially when it's just an outline. Sometimes you end up cutting the wrong way and ruin your entire stencil. And I'll show you a few examples of that after. Alrighty everyone, um, to finish cutting out the first layer of the stencil. I'm not going to color it all the way in, just to uh, show you guys what I'm talking about. So, when you're done here, just go along the edges and peel it off. You don't really need this anymore unless you screw up and you want to do another outline. Okay, so, um, let me just see if you guys can see it. Ah, you 
probably can't because of the light. Okay, so this is what I was telling you guys about um, to color it in when you still have the outline over it after each piece that you cut out. Because as you can see, you can obviously see the black marker, but when you get closer, you see just the thin outline of what you've already cut out. And when you don't have the outline on, it's hard to remember exactly what you cut out and what you were supposed to cut out. Because after a while, especially if your design is pretty intricate, all these lines and uh, outlines just begin to blur in and become the same. And you end up cutting the wrong one. So this next cut, so after you take the first layer off, it's going to be the easiest because you've already cut through. Most of it's already coming out. And all you have to do is pretty much just go over it pretty lightly again. Cut out all the uh, edges and the pieces that are holding it together. And you should be pretty good. So I finally just finished cutting it out. And this is what your final project sh product should look like. I really fucked up because I forgot to mention this pretty important kind of tip in FYI. If you're doing faces, it doesn't go well on black fabric with white paint. I found that out the hard way. Um, I'm not exactly sure why. Because last time I did it, it really screwed up. You couldn't even tell it was a face or anything like that. So yeah, so if you're going to do a face, try to do it, um, black paint on white uh, fabric. You can try white paint on black fabric to see how it turns out, see for yourself and stuff, because some pictures might be different than others and you might actually be able to see it good. So just for an example now, to show you guys how to paint the patches and uh, make the final product. Um, I'm just going to take one of my old stencils that I've used back when I was a young teenager. Pretty, you know, generic uh, patch that every punk has, an Operation Ivy patch along with crass and black flag every you know pat punk has one of those patches might be a little rusty but let's give it a shot here also um i still have not mastered the art of painting patches because if you expect to get it entirely inside the line then your hopes are probably a bit too high in expectations because no matter what it always seems to bleed through the stencil a little bit like on the side so it'll be like a straight line you'll see like a little bubble at the edge of it, it might not bother you that much most people it doesn't but to me it did and after years and years and years and years of doing stencils and patches I still have yet to master the art of not letting it bleed through I've tried everything from spray paint fabric spray paint um, painting with a thin paintbrush everything it just always bleeds through so if you know how to stop that or what to do please by all means let me know because that's one of the reasons why I stopped doing them but yeah so for the most part they, they always look pretty good just little things like that really I, I can't can't stand stuff like that so let's get get right into this Alrighty, so you just want to go until it's uh, covered with the first coat of paint so yeah so there's your first coat of paint it still looks pretty dark I mean, it still looks like uh, black fabric, obviously. So the first layer is just gonna dry, and then get ready to do the second, second layer when it uh, when it dries. Alrighty, so after you let it dry, a couple minutes, not long, maybe two or three minutes of that. You know, get ready to do your second coat. And this one doesn't take too long; it's just a nice little layer to go up, give it some depth. I think that's the fucking word for it. I don't know. You might have to do three coats because that's what it's looking like right now. I usually don't use fabric paint. I just use um, paint that's used to paint your walls. Uh, that's what I use for pretty much all of it. But if you don't have that, you can just get any kind of paint. Acrylic paint works just fine as well. I just use whatever I had laying around the house. So yeah, there it is after the second coat. Can't really see the words too well because the stencil's uh, popping up. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it another coat just to make it a little bit more dark. Alrighty guys, just finished the third coat. Now let's take it off to see the final product. Also, when you're pulling it off, I like to lift it, like uh, bend it, I guess. That way it doesn't smudge the paint underneath. At least try not to. Alright, yeah, I totally fucked up on that. I'm a little rusty. You get the idea of which you're going to be going for. See along the edges, like along the neck and all that, bled through the, that. Yeah, it's an old stencil too. But you get the idea. You can just keep at it and try different things. It's not always going to come out perfect, but you might end up getting lucky on a few few of them. And uh, find a technique that works for you. Try different paints. Uh, different paints are, some of, uh, some of them are thicker and some of them are thinner, etc. Just experiment and have a lot of fun with it. And for the final step, to cut it out and I will be right back to show. Alright, this was what I was telling you guys about earlier when I said if you're cutting out something that's circular, you're going to have to do it like military stenciling and see with the B's, the D's, the O's, so for example like that, you have to 
make a cut like that so that way it doesn't come out. All right, it's time to cut it out now. And I don't usually like to use scissors. I like to get a nice straight line when I'm cutting. That way it's uh, nice and perfect for when you make the patch. So all you gotta do is just take a ruler or straight line, something straight edge, I guess. Take your X-Acto knife and just cut it. My, yeah. Like that. And then it should just ply right off. And then just pull her off. Nope. I almost cut my fucking finger right there. That was stupid. So there's a patch all ready for sewing. It's pretty big, so I usually like to make that like a thigh patch for my legs or something like that. And let her dry and should be good. Uh, sewing, that's a whole different video. I don't think I'm going to make one. There's tons of tutorials on how to make that. But, so yeah, I'm going to show you guys now some, some of the clothes and patches that I've made and how they've turned out. Start off with my vest that I made when I was very, very young. Grown a lot since then. Pretty different mindset and stuff, but it's still pretty much similar in a way. Um, this one I made a Beardo. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him. He's a rapper, but he also makes some great punk songs. Check out 24 Hour Party. That one's awesome. I got Feed the Poor. I did that one. I just wrote with a fucking marker. An anarchy patch that I made. Um, some leftover crack lyrics. A couple other things on there. I made this one. I, I made two t-shirts. Well, I made more than two t-shirts, but I made a Che Guevara t-shirt. I did this one a long time ago with some spray paint. That's why it's starting to come off on there. It's pretty wrinkled. I decided to make one because I felt it's pretty hypocritical to buy a Che Guevara t-shirt. Especially coming from a sweatshop and whatnot. Uh, I made a G.G. Allen t-shirt. Turned out alright. I made this one for my buddy, but it was a size too big or too small. It's a Bob Marley. I did it with spray paint as well. As you can see, it bled out through the stencil. It's pretty much inevitable. It's going to happen no matter what. Uh, if you're doing it with spray paint, throw it in the wash. The little specks, they... They come out pretty easily in the washer, but the main stuff always stays intact, which has been really nice. I made these jeans. These are some of my favorite that I did. Um, all these have been made except for um, lower class brats, that patch right there. Casualties, leftover crack, street dogs, cigarette logo, because I love smoking, obviously. Screeching Weasel, Mischief Brew, Ghost Mice. Johnny Hobo and Freight Trains. And my plan is to cover these completely all with patches. Unfortunately, I don't like the jeans itself they don't feel good on my on me so i think i'm gonna have to redo it all uh just cut out the patches what i used to sew what i found works really great actually if you're looking for something to sew is um dental floss white dental floss it looks great on the black fabric especially if it's all black and white and it's very thick and sturdy so that works out really good still have yet to cover the back obviously and then my pride and joy this one it was the first one I ever made, and it's still a work in progress. One day I'll get back into sewing them all on. But this is my main jacket. I'll show you from got another Johnny Hobo and the Freight Trains one. Throw parties, not grenades. Uh, most of these I did when I was really, really young. It's my first ever jacket. It's what got me into everything. Uh, obviously, some ones that I've bought. In. Uh, this anti-flag one, anti-flag, however you want to pronounce it. I used it from an old t-shirt that I had, and I just cut the logo off and sewed it on. I made this crass one on this kind of patch material. That one turned out pretty good, actually. Um, like I said, pretty generic and stuff like that. And then I, on the back here, I got Too Many Cops, Too Little Justice. I don't know if you guys can see it. Black Flag. And then on the back, I got this, the Casualties. And because they were pretty much my favorite punk band when I was growing up. Uh, I used their, also their old t-shirt as well. I had a t-shirt. My mom cut out the fuck you on it. Because I was young and rebellious and wanted to stick it to the man. So I had a fuck you t-shirt. I was so hardcore. And she told me if I didn't cut that off, she would cut it off. And one day I got up ready for school. I was going to wear it. And I found the fuck you was cut out of it. So I went to school with a patch in my shirt. Or a hole in my shirt, sorry. I fucked up on this too as well because uh, I thought I could make it even. I thought it was all even, but clearly it's not. You can't get an even row going down the stud, so it looks pretty shitty. So one day I'm going to get back to figuring out how I can fix it and just make it all together. But till then, I just wear it with pride and I love it. It's been one of my favorite jackets. Leave me a comment or shoot me a message or anything if you guys have any extra questions about uh, anything... That you might any problems that you might come across and like i said if you guys find a solution to make it so it doesn't bleed through i've tried taping it onto the fabric and it still doesn't really work so just let me let me know and uh yeah so hope you guys enjoy it and uh, 
take something from it and make some good patches and have a lot of fun. That's all that matters, man. Thanks for watching very much. So yeah, there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys learned something. Rock on. That was fucking stupid.